Okay, so today I'm gonna to teach you guys how I color grade. Let the record show, I am not a professional colorist, but I have colored a lot of videos. Here are a couple of examples. There are a ton of different methods to do this. I don't know if I have the exact one, but I have done it many times and I think they look pretty good. The clients that I send them to, they like the videos. So I'm gonna teach you how, <coughs> So I'm going to teach you guys how I color my videos for clients. It's pretty fast, pretty simple, all in Premiere Pro. So as you open up Premiere Pro, you have your tabs up front. Right now I'm in the color tab and that's what's going to give me basically all the scopes and the sliders and all the things that I need to perform my color grading. Okay, so take your footage and we're going to put it in Premiere Pro. So in color grading Blackmagic raw footage, there's a couple things that you might want to get. I have a plugin from a company called Autochroma, and what that does is allow Premiere Pro to read the Blackmagic raw footage um, that comes out of the camera. Basically, Blackmagic raw allows you to manipulate more values within the image itself. So the cool thing about Blackmagic raw is that we're able to change basically anything that we shot prior. For example, with this Blackmagic RAW plugin from Autochroma, we can go in and change the ISO. So I shot at 1250. If you shot at 1250, you can't go below that, but I knew that 1250 is what I needed. Um, but let's just say I needed the ISO a little bit brighter. I can change it to 2000. I can change it to 4000. Obviously, I wouldn't do that. Um, but if you so happen to have missed the proper ISO, the proper exposure, you can go back in here and change all of that um, as if you were there shooting again, if that makes sense. Um, I like to turn on highlight recovery. Then we can go back to this, our sequence right here. So we have our image. Blackmagic Raw comes out very flat, but what this is gonna allow us to do is um, pump as much saturation and as much color as we want. If we take a look at our um, waveform over here, um, we have our values of zero to 100. Zero being like the darkest parts of your image and 100 being the brightest parts of your image and your midtones, and shadows, highlights, everything else in between. So the first thing I like to do is go into the basic correction panel and I will take the blacks and I will bring them down to they're just sitting above zero. You don't wanna bring it too much because then you start to crush those blacks and then you get no detail. So let's lift that up a little bit. Awesome. Next thing I like to do is take the whites, right? I'm working my way up and I will lift that. You know, I'm looking at the image, but I really don't want it to go below or above um, 80, you know, most cases. Um, look at the image and kind of see what the image looks like. So it's a combination of looking at your image and looking at the scopes. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll take the shadows and bring that down. And what that's gonna do is give us some contrast. Don't do it too much because we're gonna get further into it. I'll show you how to add more contrast on an adjustment layer. And it's sitting just above zero. I'll play with the highlights a little bit. Again, looking at your image, looking at your scopes. Um, I won't touch the contrast slider. What I'll do is I'll take the exposure and I'll bring it up. Not too much, um, it all depends on your image. This is supposed to be like a moody part of the music video, so we're just gonna leave it as is. If we look at the Parade RGB right here, basically what you wanna do is make sure that your red, green, and blue channels are leveled, and then that's how you know you have um, perfect white balance. So it's looking a little too green. Let's bring this up here, and that looks about right. Again, um, we can go into the auto chroma plugin and we can change our white balance as if we were there so if i miss my white balance i can go in and change it to whatever the lighting was so our image is starting to look a little dicey let me let me fix this real quick once we have that corrected we're going to go in and open up an adjustment layer let's click on this um, just hit okay because these are the settings that we have here and we can trim this up Oops. Now on this adjustment layer, this is where we're gonna add our contrast and our saturation and our vibrance. So we'll go into our curves and I add just the slightest S curve. Again, open up your scopes and make sure that we're not overdoing things. So we will 
make an S here on this shadow side. Lift this up on the highlights. Again, look at your image. We can click back on our um, actual clip. Go back to the basic correction panel and let's bring these shadows down slightly. Even bring those blacks down, play with it a little bit, just kind of see where it's looking. Um, if we were to disable this adjustment layer, look how much contrast added in. I think that looks pretty good. Let's disable that. Now let's look at our um, image before correction with correction, and then let's add the adjustment layer. I think it looks pretty good after we've added our S curve in this curves panel. I like to go down to the Luma versus saturation and make a point there and bring it down, make a point here, bring it down. The next thing I do is I go into our creative panel and I will bump up this vibrance. I've noticed with black magic raw footage, I can crank it to 30 and it looks pretty good um, on the vibrance. And then I go to about 125 on the, sa the saturation. All depends on your project, all depends on the look you're trying to go for. I come back out of that and I go into my color wheels and match. Now we're gonna start to add in that uh, teal and orange kind of look. We'll add in the shadows. We'll make it a little bit more blue. I'll add a little bit of a vignette, right? Just to kind of give it a little bit more mood. And if we're looking back at these uh, scopes, there's nothing too crushed. Everything's pretty well evened out. If we take a look at it again, let's disable this adjustment layer. And let's go back to our correction. See how everything here, see how everything in the scopes is uh, kind of like small and mushed together. And when we correct it, it's spread out a little bit more. This is a little bit different of a situation because there's all the fog and stuff like that. It makes it a little bit more difficult, but in principle, this works. Um, then we'll add in the adjustment layer and that spreads it out even more. Right, so we have some contrast and we have some saturation. So let's look at another before and after. So raw, corrected, and with that adjustment layer with the blue in the shadows. Now, one big thing that we don't wanna neglect is the skin tones, right? Cause we've added all this stuff. We don't want the skin tones to suffer because of that. The next thing we'll do is we'll make another adjustment layer. Let's go to adjustment layer. Hit OK, bring this over on top of this adjustment layer. I like to make it a different color, um, mango because skin tone, mango, whatever. And what we'll do here is we'll go into the HSL secondary. We'll click on this dropper with a plus sign on it and go over the skin. We'll hit this little box here called color gray and we'll go to our Lumetri scopes again. And what we're looking at here is the vector scope, the, U, the YUV vector scope. With this vector scope, we're gonna be, wanna be looking at the flesh line. That's the line that sits in between the yellow and the red because all skin tones sit in that particular um, area of the color wheel. So what we wanna do is make sure that we're moving these sliders around to get the proper colors. So. Let's take a look at this Luma slider, move that around. Remember, we're only selecting the skin tones. Um, what's gonna help you do this is to raise this denoise slider and raise the blur slider. Kind of just softens up what we're doing, um, gives it a more professional look, in my opinion. Um, let's move this saturation slider here. And again, guys, just play with it until you're getting these skin tones selected. Ah, uh, here we go. All right, so now that it looks like we got our skin tone selected, uh, we'll go down into this correction tab. On the highlights, uh, what I like to do is make sure that we move it towards the color that the subject was lit with. So for example, this was lit with a 5,600K 5, 5, light. So daylight is kind of sitting towards this color. Then we'll take the midtones and we'll move those towards orange. And then we'll take the shadows and move them towards red. And what that does, moving the shadows towards the red is basically simulating like blood flow within our um, skin. Now, how do we get it to sit more 
directly on that flesh line. Well, we'll go into the temperature sliders, and as we move it left and right, we can kind of see the waveforms on the vector scope moving. So we want to get it so that it's not too far to the red side and not too far to the yellow side. Let's get it moving right about there. Bring it up a little bit. Move it back this way. Let's take a look at it now. And that to me looks pretty good. Again, this is a little bit of a different situation being that we have colored lights thrown on him. But if we move it over again, this already looks better than what we had. So let's take a look at our beginning image straight out of the camera, corrected, adjustment layer, and then retaining our skin tones. Again, every lighting situation, every video is gonna be different. Again, use your eye. Those scopes are a really good way to kind of know where you're not pushing it too far. Um, again, this situation is a little bit different because we have green lights being thrown on him, blue lights and red, and it's all changing with the music. Um, but in principle, we have the skin tone selected and they're moved over on the flesh line. And that's really what we want. Um, and then you have the ability to like really saturate it and really move it far left, far right. Um, but I like it just about there. And then, yeah, that's how you color grade black magic raw footage. At least that's how I do it. Anyway guys, if you guys like the video, leave a like, um, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know any other tutorials you'd like to see. Okay, thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>